Hi folks, HR Funk here. You don't have to have watched very many of my videos at all to know that I am a 1911 fan and have been for a long time. And I own several very nice examples of that historic pistol. But one thing I have to admit right here at the beginning of this video, and I hope this doesn't diminish me in too many of your eyes, and that is the fact that I have never owned a 1911 that was produced by the original manufacturer of the 1911 pistol, i.e. Colt Firearms. Until now. The subject of my video today is a review on my recently acquired Colt Government Model 1911 Competition Series pistol. And in this video, we are going to take a close-up look at all of the features and functions of this Competition Series 1911 Colt. Then we're going to head off to the range and see how it shoots. So sit back and relax while I review the Colt 1911 Competition Series pistol. And here is my newly acquired Colt 1911 Competition Series pistol, or at least the box. And for anyone who is interested, the product number from Colt for this pistol is 01070CCS-TT. And I'll open the box and show you the pistol itself. And there's not a lot that comes with the pistol when you get it from Colt. You get a little bit of paperwork from Colt. Uh, you got literature about joining the NRA. Uh, you've got one or two other things and you get some lubricant. And that's pretty much it. You do get a chamber flag. But otherwise, there's nothing in here other than those items and a lock. Of course, mandatory to get a lock. But it's not like some manufacturers where you get all sorts of cleaning rods and other uh, things like stickers and patches and one thing or another. Basically, you are getting the pistol. And here is that Colt 1911 Competition Series pistol. And I was very excited to finally get this pistol and have an authentic Colt in my collection. This pistol cost just over $1,000. It was about $1,030 uh, when I picked it up from the firearms retailer. And that's actually a little less than the MSRP. The MSRP on these pistols is $1,100. And for $1,100, I had some pretty high expectations for this pistol. And in some ways, it has lived up to those expectations, and in some ways, it has not. And I will cover all those things as I go on in this review. So before I get into the review proper, I want to point out the finish of this pistol. And as you can see, it is a two-tone pistol with a stainless steel frame and a blued steel slide. And I really like this particular look. I've said before, there are a couple of things when it comes to firearms finish that I'm kind of a sucker for. One of them is a really nice two-tone finish. The other is really nice case hardening. And this is the former, as you can see. I like that appearance and that look. And with the black and gray G10 Colt grips here, I think that really sets it off. So this really caught my eye when I saw it in the case at the firearms retailer. And that was one of the first things that drew my attention to it. And from there, the more I looked at it and the more I handled it, the more I liked it. And of course, here it is now as part of my collection. So with that out of the way, let's get on with the review. So as usual, I will begin my review of this pistol from the top and work my way down. And you can see that the front sight is a fiber optic. And since this pistol is intended for competition, not necessarily self-defense, the fiber optic is probably a good option for that. Although being a defensive shooter myself, I may end up switching this out. Although one thing I will say that I've noticed is I'm not sure what type of material Colt uses for their fiber optic, but this seems to be a very bright fiber optic front sight. It seems to be brighter than a lot of the other fiber optics that I have in my collection. So I may keep it around for a while and just see what I think of that before I start swapping things out. The rear sight is a Novak sight as you can see right there. It is adjustable for elevation via the screw right there in the sight and it is also adjustable for windage by drifting it back and forth in its dovetail. So we have a fully adjustable rear sight and that fiber optic front sight and there is the sight picture that we get right there which seems to be a very good sight picture. You'll see when we get to the range and I already recorded the range portion of this video I did that yesterday when the temperature was a little bit warmer. It was up in the teens yesterday. Today it's in the single digits. So I thought I would better get out there yesterday while the weather was a little bit better and get that recorded. But I noticed while I was on the range with this that that sight 
combination is very easy to pick up. Of course, it was very bright yesterday. I wasn't dealing with any sort of cloudy conditions or anything else, but I really did like those sights. And as I said, I may well keep them around for longer than I originally expected to. Also, when we look at the top of the slide, we see that it has a matte finish as opposed to the polished blue on the sides of the slide. And this is something that I noticed yesterday when I was out on the range. The sun was very bright, which we'll see in the video when we get to that part. And I was not getting any kind of glare or anything that was interfering with my sight picture, so that does seem to be doing its job. When we look at the markings of this pistol, we can see the competition series engraved on the right-hand side of the slide. And when we go to the left-hand side of the slide, we see the traditional Colt markings, which does my heart good to finally have a pistol with these markings and that name emblazoned upon it. So again, I'm very happy about this. I'm still excited about adding this to my collection, even though, as I said, there's going to be a couple of things I talk about in this review that didn't quite live up to what I expected from Colt. The barrel of this pistol, and I think I have it upside down, uh, no, apparently that is right side up. As you can see, it is marked Colt 45 Auto National Match. So this is a National Match barrel. And that was another reason I really like this, because I was looking forward to really good accuracy from this pistol. There is absolutely no movement of the barrel at the barrel hood, and no movement at the bushing. This is a very tight pistol. There is a very minimal amount of slide to frame play, but again, not very much at all, and certainly nothing that I'm worried about. Also, looking at the slide, we can see there are no front slide cocking serrations, which is fine with me. I don't use them anyway. The rear serrations are deep and fairly sharp, and they do allow you to get a good grasp on the rear of the slide for cocking the pistol or hand cycling the slide, so they are very functional. And again, I'm just not worried about the lack of front cocking serrations on this pistol. At the rear of the pistol, we can see the skeletonized commander style hammer, which at least theoretically speeds up lock time. I don't know if that's ever really been determined to improve accuracy, but at least it sounds good. And also the upswept beaver tails type grip safety with the extended portion at the bottom to ensure you get a positive disengagement of that grip safety and it not only looks good, but it is very functional. I had no problems when I was shooting the pistol that came about as a result of the grip safety not properly disengaging. This pistol fortunately uses a standard recoil system with the exception that it has a double recoil spring instead of the standard single recoil spring, but otherwise there is no full length guide rod, which I mentioned in a previous video that I really don't care for. And we can also see when looking at the slide that it has a lowered and flared ejection port to improve reliability. And this has become pretty much standard on 1911s these days, so I was not expecting it to not have those features, but it is executed very well, as you can see there. So again, another feature of this pistol. Folks, I'm not going to disassemble the pistol, mainly because it's very tight and it takes a little bit of work to get it back together, especially getting it back together and not putting a scratch right here as I'm installing the slide stop. So I'm not going to disassemble it. I will say that it can be disassembled without tools. It's not so tight that you need a barrel wrench or anything like that. It comes down just like a standard GI 1911. So there are a million videos out there to show you how to disassemble and reassemble a 1911 if you're not sure. But something I wanted to point out is the feed ramp, which you can see right there which is not a polished feed ramp. That was something else that caught my attention. And the barrel is also not polished right there at the throat. So I'm not sure what to expect when I start trying to shoot defensive hollow point ammunition through this pistol, but hopefully I'm not gonna have an issue with that. I did, however, just want to point out the lack of polishing on either of those surfaces. And turning it over to the left side, we can see that it has an extended thumb safety and this is where I met my first complaint with this pistol. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll stop talking and just engage the safety. 
but the safety is very gritty. Now it has gotten better than it was when I first brought it home and I have engaged and disengaged this safety probably 500 times at this point trying to wear that in. I actually contacted Colt customer service and discussed this with them and they said to give it time to break in and see if it improved and if so then there's no problem. If not I can send it back to them and they'll repair it. So that was the first snag that I met with my Colt 1911 competition series pistol. And again, it has improved when I first got it, trying to apply the thumb safety with just the thumb of my shooting hand was very difficult, almost impossible. I pretty much had to reach over with the thumb of my non-shooting hand and apply it. Now it was never a problem to disengage. It always disengaged very well. So it was and is only a problem when engaging that thumb safety. Moving up to the slide stop, we can see it is a standard GI part. It is not extended, which is fine with me. I'm not a big fan of the extended slide stops because when you are gripping the pistol, sometimes that extended slide stop, especially if it's paired with an extended thumb safety, gets in the way and it just seems like there's too many things over there to be able to fit your thumbs where you need to to hold onto the pistol. So I'm just fine with the standard slide stop and really, this thumb safety is extended slightly, but not tremendously so, so I really prefer that too, other than the fact that it does have that grittiness that I talked about a minute ago. The magazine release, as you can see, is checkered. It is not extended, but it is a checkered magazine release, and as you can see there is a cutout in the G10 grip to be able to reach that magazine release a little bit easier, and that does work pretty well. I can reach that without really turning the pistol in my hand very much at all and be able to release the magazine. Also checkered is the mainspring housing of the pistol and you can see it is a flat mainspring housing. Now some of you know I'm one of the strange people who prefers the arch mainspring housing but I can live with the flat mainspring housing on this pistol and the checkering is very functional. It does feel like it really sort of grips the heel of your hand and helps with that recoil management, so I do like that checkering. Now I hope this next feature is visible in the video. You can see that the area right at the back of the trigger guard here is relieved, and we can see it a little bit more, I guess, if we look at it from the bottom there, to allow the shooter to get a higher grip on the pistol. Again, that's also to help with that recoil management of the pistol. And it's also very comfortable, it allows for a very comfortable grip on the pistol. Uh, there's no need for any kind of cushion there or rubber grips to go all the way around or anything else. And again, when I was shooting it, it was a very comfortable pistol to shoot, even though I was shooting it with full power uh, 230 grain hardball ammunition. So I was not shooting it with a powder puff uh, target round or target load that produces very little recoil. I was shooting it with real 45 ACP ammunition. We can also see that the magazine well is beveled to allow for easier reloads. It is beveled both on the sides and it's also relieved here at the back to allow for that insertion of the magazine and make that a little bit easier. So a little bit of beveling. There is no large funnel type magazine well, but at least we did get some beveling there to help with our reloads. And I already mentioned the G10 grips, which I think look good. They are checkered or at least textured to give you a good positive grasp on the pistol. And so not only do they look good, but they're also functional. And I do like those grips. And as I said, I think it gives the pistol overall a very striking appearance. The next thing I'm going to talk about is something else for a $1,000 pistol or an $1,100 MSRP pistol that just kind of surprised me. I, I would not have expected this. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the light to the point that you can see this on the frame. But there is a wavy look to the frame here as though there was a little bit of a chatter on the milling machine that was producing the frame. I can't feel it, it feels perfectly flat, but I can see it. And maybe you can see a little bit of that waviness there if I get the light just right. Again, for a pistol that cost this much, I was surprised by that. And I was surprised that the thumb safety had that grittiness in there. So those were two things that caught my attention uh, right off the bat with this pistol that I thought for the MSRP and for a Colt, I would have thought they would have done a little bit better job on that. 
For my next source of annoyance with this pistol, I'm going to try not to go on a rant, but this is one of those things that kind of blows my mind. Again, this is an $1,100 pistol. To me, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that is a lot of money to spend on a firearm when I have 1911s that I've spent significantly less on that work just fine. But for a pistol with this MSRP, it comes with one eight round magazine. That blows my mind. I have no idea how much these magazines cost Colt. And you can see this is a Colt magazine stamped with the eight round uh, markings there. But one magazine, $1,100 and you get one magazine. Now, fortunately, I have a lot of 1911 magazines, so I'm not going to be relegated to only using one. But I think Colt for that price could at least add a spare if not a couple of spares. Okay, folks, we are now up to the feature that sold this pistol. And that is, and by the way, this is an unloaded pistol. That is this trigger. You can see it is of the lightened three hole variety. It is a medium long trigger and it is simply put the best factory 1911 trigger that I have ever felt. I'm going to weigh this shortly. I haven't weighed it yet. My suspicion is this is going to come in between three and a half and four pounds, but it is a wonderful trigger. It breaks very cleanly. I'm detecting no, eh, maybe just a tiny bit of creep, just a tiny bit, and then it breaks. See if I can get that so you can see the creep in the trigger as opposed to the creep pulling the trigger. And that time I didn't get it. I'm reaching around the camera, which makes this extremely difficult. You might just have to take my word for it. There is a slight, ever so slight, there it is right there. You got to see it that time. Amount of creep in the trigger. But overall, it's a very clean break. And as I said, the weight is tremendous. There is no over travel whatsoever. So I'm going to grab my trigger pull gauge and we'll see exactly where this trigger is breaking. Okay, folks, let's see exactly where this trigger is breaking. Just over three and a half pounds on that one. I think I might've even over pulled it just a little bit. I'm going to try it again, see if I can get a better reading. just under three and a half pounds. And I would say three and a half pounds or just under is an accurate reading for this pistol. Let's try one more. Again, this is for a factory trigger. It is tremendous. Right at three and a half pounds. So again, that trigger really probably more so than any other feature of this pistol is why it is now in my collection. And one last comment about the trigger, it is adjustable for over travel. If it did have some over travel, you can see the screw in the face of the trigger right there. So it does give you a little bit of adjustment if you would need it. And that's gonna do it for the shop review, folks. Now let's talk about how this pistol did on the range. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I went out to the range yesterday. The conditions that I had out there is there was about a foot of snow on the range. You'll see that in the video here in a moment and the temperatures were in the teens. So I did not exactly have the most conducive conditions to accurate pistol shooting. Even so, I went out and I wanted to shoot this pistol and see how it was going to do. And I decided that because I was dealing with those kind of conditions, which are also not really conducive to good video recording, <laughs> that I would just record the shooting portion without explaining things like I normally do at the range and I would do the voiceover back here. So you're going to hear me talking here in the shop as you're watching the video from the range. And the one good thing about this is I can tell you what I was thinking about things as they were happening, 
And I also brought the targets back here from the range so I can talk to you about those and a little, I can give you a little bit more information about the results that I saw after I was finished shooting the pistol. So as usual, I started things out with my typical 20 foot accuracy drill, which is a slow fire drill. And I am really concentrating on getting a good sight picture and a good trigger press. And the only thing I did in preparation for that is a few dry fire cycles. So when you see me start shooting in the video, those are literally the first shots that I ever fired out of the Colt Competition Series pistol. And overall, the group ended up being very good. I had two flyers that were entirely my fault and I just got a little aggressive on that trigger and I pulled those a little bit low. But you'll see at the end, I had of the eight shots that I fired, and I did use a full eight shot magazine for this test, that I've got six out of the eight that are in a really nice, about a one inch center to center group at six o'clock on the target, which is right where I was holding. I was holding at six o'clock on the bullseye and that's right where those shots went. So I think the accuracy the pistol was demonstrating in this test was very, very good. Now I can show you the target here in the shop. And here is that group for the slow fire accuracy test. And I just measured these six shots just for fun. And they are right at one inch center to center from that distance of 20 feet. So again, that was very good accuracy from the pistol. And these two flyers that are low down here are all on me. Those are my fault. The pistol itself demonstrated very, very good accuracy in that test. Next, I backed off to a distance of 50 feet from the target. And from that distance of 50 feet, I fired another full eight shot magazine and I fired this at a medium to medium fast shot tempo. And I was very happy with this group from that distance of 50 feet. All but one of those shots can be covered with my hand. They were all in the heart and lung area and it was not difficult to keep them there. So I was very pleased with that shooting. And I think the controllability of this pistol is enhanced a little bit because of that dual recoil spring system. And that just makes it a little bit easier to manage, a little bit easier to keep on target. And again, that trigger is just wonderful. I can't talk enough about how good that is and how much easier it makes accurate shooting. By the way, folks, I meant to show you before the ammunition that I was using yesterday was PMC 230 grain full metal jacket ammunition. As I said before, not low recoiling target grade ammunition. This was full power military spec ammo. So after I finished the 50 foot drill, I got a little bit cocky and I had three rounds of ammunition left in this box and I decided to try three headshots from that distance of 50 feet. And I'll show you how that went. And as you can see, I loaded things up and got ready to go again from that distance of 50 feet. And the first two shots were great and I pulled the last one low. So that's what happens when you get cocky. And here's that 50 foot target again. The initial eight shots that I shot from 50 feet, actually I probably can cover just about all eight of them if I hold my hand just right. So again, I was very happy with that shooting from 50 feet. And we can see the head shots there. I've got two very good and that one that I pulled low. Now with the location of that particular one that I pulled low, I'm not really sure that my bad guy would have <laughs> been a whole lot happier than uh, had I put one up here. But uh, it was not actually where I intended to put it. I intended to have it up here with those other two. So next, it was back up to a distance of seven yards for some failure drills, and here's how they looked. So again, the controllability afforded by that dual recoil spring system was noted here when I was doing the failure drills. As I said, this was full power 45 ACP ammunition, and I did not have any problem controlling that recoil and keeping the shots where I wanted them, except for the very last one that I pulled a little bit low into the left, and that was certainly me. That was not the pistol's fault. So I was very happy overall with the way it performed in the failure drill. And here's a close-up look at the failure drill target for anybody that wants to get a better look at that. Again, not difficult at all keeping the body shots in the body keeping the headshots in the head, except for this very last one, which as I said, was entirely my fault. So now it was on to a multiple adversary drill from a distance of five yards. And in this drill, I fired one round to the target on the right, then three rounds to the target on the left, 
and then two more rounds to target on the right, all in rapid succession. And again, I am testing the controllability of the pistol under recoil and just seeing how fast I can transition from target to target and keep accurate shots on the body. And as you saw, the failure drill goes by very quickly. <laughs> and here's what those shots look like on target. And since it's too hard to try to hold both of those targets at the same time to show them to you, I put them up on the bench here, and they are in the same position as they were in when you saw them in the video. And once more, there was no difficulty whatsoever in keeping those body shots in the body in that rapid shot tempo. And the controllability, as I said, with full power 45 ACP ammunition, because of that dual recoil spring system, was noteworthy. And again, the accuracy that's afforded by that trigger continues to impress. Well, folks, at this point, I felt there was only one thing left to test while I was out at the range, and that was to determine whether or not the Colt 1911 Government Model Competition Series is a 20-foot tack driver. So I loaded up the magazine with three rounds, I put a tack in the target, and here's what that looked like. So the tack driving test is always kind of an interesting challenge, and made all the more interesting when I'm standing out there shivering. If you've never tried to hold a steady <laughs> sight picture while you're uh, shivering in weather that's in the teens, that's exactly what I was doing yesterday. And I managed to pull my first shot a little bit low, and then the second shot ended up going basically exactly through the same hole. <laughs> so I had one shot left to find out if the pistol was a tack driver, and I had to raise my point of aim to the point where the front sight was completely covering the tack. I just had to guesstimate where it was. And with that last shot, my very last shot out of the three that I always use for the tack driving test, it was a dead center hit, and I drove that thing right out of there. So... The Competition Series yes. 1911 Colt is a 20-foot tack driver. And here's the target for the tack driving test. And just for fun, I measured these three shots center to center. And keep in mind, two shots went through this exact same hole right here. And that is just over half an inch from those three shots at that distance of 20 feet. So again, that national match barrel really does demonstrate some impressive accuracy and it's allowed to demonstrate that accuracy because of that tremendous trigger. So all in all, while I was at the range yesterday, I put about 65 rounds through my new pistol, and it functioned perfectly while I was shooting it, but I did have one bump in the road, and I'm going to explore that here momentarily. The issue came about when I fully loaded the magazine, and the only magazine I took with me was the Colt magazine that came with the pistol. When I fully loaded it with eight rounds, and inserted it into the magazine well with the slide locked open and then released the slide, it would fail to feed the round into the chamber. And I think this is just a break-in issue. And when I got back home after shooting at the range, and it did that three times out there, and again, I want to stress, it never malfunctioned while I was shooting it. It was 100% while I was shooting it. Only when I put that full eight-round magazine into the pistol and then tried to release the slide, I was getting those failure to feeds, and I think maybe the extractor is a little bit tight, or was. So when I got home, I experimented by loading eight rounds in a Wilson Combat magazine, and it fed that fine, no problem whatsoever. I loaded eight rounds in a Chip McCormick magazine, it fed that into the chamber, no problem whatsoever. And I had another magazine that is a Remington magazine, I loaded that with eight rounds, and it fed that with no problem whatsoever. So it could be that that situation or that problem has already worked itself out in those first 65 rounds. But I've got three magazines down here, along with the original Colt magazine, and I've got a dummy round that I'm going to use, and let's see if that happens today when I demonstrate it on camera, or if I, hopefully that problem is something is now in the past, and I won't see it again with the pistol. So first up is the Wilson Combat magazine, and you can see there's no, maybe you can't see it, <laughs> there's no primer in this cartridge. It is a dummy cartridge, but it is fully loaded with eight rounds. And the slide is locked to the rear. And when I put it in there and release the slide, it chambers that round with no problem whatsoever. Again, this is the Wilson Combat Magazine. Next up is the Chip McCormick Magazine, once again fully loaded with eight rounds and the dummy round on top. And it chambers the round with no problem whatsoever. 
And here is the fully loaded Remington magazine. And again, it chambers the round out of there, no problem whatsoever. Now I'm going to go back and try that Colt magazine and see if I have that issue with it today. Okay, and the Colt magazine is fully loaded with the dummy round on top. And one thing I noticed when loading this magazine is that spring is very stiff, especially when I'm trying to get that eighth round in there. So this could be an issue where the magazine itself needs a little bit of break in just for that spring to relax maybe a little bit. But we'll see what happens today. And today it chambered that round just fine. So again, I think that's really just a break-in issue that I was experiencing yesterday. The pistol only has 65 rounds through it at this point. After I get a couple of hundred rounds through it, I expect any little weird thing like that is probably going to work itself out. And there you have it, folks. That's the video review of my new Colt 1911 Competition Series pistol. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, WarbirdBunker.com is making t-shirts for the channel. If you go to WarbirdBunker.com, you can find my t-shirt there, along with some other HR Funk gear. We've got stickers now and a few other things, along with all of Nathan's other firearms and patriotic-themed items that he has on WarbirdBunker.com. And if you use my discount code there, which is HRFUNK for you, that'll save you 10% off your order from WarbirdBunker.com. See you next time, folks. Until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.